I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, God is doing an amazing thing in your life. I've always told you this, when the word of God comes to you, it means there is hope. Because see those words, Jesus said, they are spirits and they are life. I'm not giving you my own words. I'm giving you the words I have received from him. And I'm delivering it to you. And listen, every word I'm going to share with you today, if you will receive it, you are going to be uplifted to a place you never imagined. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Open your heart and let God's word penetrate and receive it with the right attitude. I've been sharing that with you. And see what God is going to bring out of your life. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, as we continue our series on the manifestation of God's love, can we call for that daily bread? Release your faith right now as we do it. Join me, say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me. All of it is coming to me. Everything I need today is coming to me in abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your name. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to our scripture in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. Now, now, it, you know, when you look at the scripture from a glance, you just think mm, he's talking about circumcision. And, and let me just read it first. No? It says, For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availed anything nor on circumcision, but faith which walketh by love. Now, say, so if you look at this scripture, you think, oh, it's talking about circumcision and non circumcision. No, it's far bigger than that. You see, the, the thing about the Bible or the scriptures is, is that they are, they are just a platform that God can use or it's a platform that creates the atmosphere for God to begin to speak to you. This is not God speaking to you. No, it's not. And say, so, oh, can God speak to you through the scriptures? Yes. But it doesn't mean the scriptures is God speaking to you. You need to understand this. Because if you don't find that life, this little thing I just shared with you is what makes the difference between those who are truly worshipping God and those who are not worshipping God. There are those who think they are worshipping God, but they are stuck in religion. You see that now? So you find people who keep arguing scriptures. Oh, the Bible said this, the Bible said this, the Bible said this, the Bible said that. Hey, you know, normally when, when I hear people like that, I always pause and say, hey, guys, what is God saying? And people go, eh, but, but God cannot say anything different from the Bible. Do you even understand the Bible? Because when, when, when God speaks, you will now realize how ignorant you have been, even with your knowledge of the scriptures. I'm telling you the truth. Because when he speaks, he opens your eyes. He opens your understanding. And then you realize, I thought I've read, read this thing before. <laughs> you know, something the Lord said to me a few days ago. I was meditating, because I do that a lot. You, you should be doing that all the time. Because he said meditate day and night, <laughs> praise God. So when he said, I was meditating on the world this morning. I was meditating on the world this afternoon. I was meditating on the world yesterday. I said, is that all you do? Yes! <laughs> so, so, Lord spoke to me and 
something I've never thought about before. And he said, Hi, Kabu Shakataya. He said, Education or reading doesn't make one intelligent. And I was like, Ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. He said, Reading doesn't make one intelligent. And then he said these words to me. He said, Reading only helps you to express your intelligence. <laughs> did, did you hear that? Reading doesn't make you intelligent. Reading helps you to express your intelligence. I'll say that again. Reading doesn't make you intelligent. Reading helps you express your intelligence. Now that means intelligence was in you. You see that now? And when you read, it's not what the person said that is making you intelligent. It's what you begin to understand. Now, let me tell you how understanding works. Understanding works based on how you see. So two people can pick up the same material and they start reading. And one person goes, yes, wow. I've gotten something I've been thinking about or I've been wondering about since. The other person said, what are you talking about? See, so-so page, yes, I'm there. So-so paragraph, yes. So-so line, yes. Can't you see it? You can't see what you're talking about. Why are you so excited? Now, what happened to the two of them? They're the same material. What happened to the two of them? One person is expressing what is inside him. So when he read that material, it, it's, his thoughts flowed in that direction. Now the other fellow whose mind most likely has been dormant, dormant in, in, in the sense that he is not applying his mind to reasoning. Now when I say reasoning, the ingredient by which you reason matters too. So this is what happens. That one just reads like a story. Now, this thing happens a lot to people who read the Bible. Someone reads, someone opens the scriptures, and he says, I want to, I want to read the book of John, for example. And then he, he, go, he starts, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was God. And the word was God. And he can't get past there for two days. And the word was God. So that means if the word was God, and now he begins to picture everything he has related as the word, and he begins to relate it as God, and then it begins to, whoa. So that means, you see that? Now what's going on? It is written, <laughs> and the word was God. Anybody can pick it up and see, and the word was God. But something was already working in this fellow. So when he sees, and the word was God, it activates something inside of him. Another fellow have read up to five, ten chapters, and he's just still reading and going. And the other fellow said, ah, man, did you know what, you know, we started reading the book of John together, I'm in chapter six. Well, I'm still in chapter one. In fact, I've not even gone past chapter two, verse two, chapter one. He said, ah, you're a slow reader. <laughs> no. I'll let this say, Bredek Shakaya. And this is what makes the difference between human beings. So the next time you pick up a book to read, don't just think that this book is going to give you knowledge. No, no, no. You are the one who's going to express knowledge by reading that book you express intelligence because something is working and that's what makes every one of us unique praise god yeah why am i sharing this because that's how the love of god works that is how it works it's not a one size fit all kind of thing every individual god deals with you as a person 
So now, when he said here that in Christ, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availed anything, and one is just thinking, what is even circumcision, sir? And someone else goes, circumcision is the prescribed order that they were following. And if you're not circumcised, you're not seen as a real Jew. You're not seen as, as someone who, who belongs to that tribe of, of, of the Jewish people. So I'm not a Jew, so does that one concern me? That's all he's saying. But another person is looking at it and he's saying, it means the other that men have set, the other that men follow, truly it means nothing. Now, look at this now. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availed anything, nor uncircumcision. So, in, in, now take note, it says, in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. So, when we all come to Jesus Christ, he's not going to ask you first, are you circumcised or are you not circumcised? And then before he decides what he wants to do with you. No. No. He says, in Christ Jesus, what works? The important thing is this. Faith which worketh by love. Now you look at circumcision and uncircumcision as the prescribed order and the uh, you know, unprescribed -prescri order. You look at circumcision and uncircumcision like this, for example. In Christ Jesus, your education does not matter. Or oh, say, the one who went to school means nothing. The one who hasn't gone to school means nothing in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, the one who has a job means nothing. The one who doesn't have a job means nothing. In Christ Jesus, the one who's handsome means nothing. The one who's not handsome or beautiful means nothing. In Christ Jesus, now you understand what I'm talking about? You begin to expand this thing. The one who's qualified <laughs> means nothing. The unqualified one means nothing. What matters in Christ Jesus is this one thing, faith which works by law. Now you say, what are you talking about? How can you say education does not matter? I'm not saying education is wrong. Understand me. What I'm saying is in Christ Jesus, education avails nothing. Meaning he doesn't consider your education before he decides what he wants to do with you. No, he doesn't. You know, you see, now, in the world, education matters. Because when you go seek for a job, they want to ask you, what's your qualification? You see? So you say, oh, I'm a PhD holder. Oh, wow. Good. That means you've really gone to school. Okay, so let's reward your years of going to school and passing the exams. Take that position. You, what is your level of education? Oh, I'm a, I'm a, a high school leaver. Or, or whatever you call it, you know. Um, school starts, I, I didn't go to college. Okay, good. Um, we have a position for you. It is this low position. And you know the truth, most times when we get to the field, it is those with less <laughs> qualifications that actually do the job. So the ones with great qualification are now the supervisors and, and sitting, oh, I think we, let's, let's reason this thing out. Why? Now, this is where reading comes in. The more you read, the more you express your intelligence. So the more you read, the more experience you will have. You understand what I'm talking about? That's if you are really expressing your intelligence. But you can read so much and become dull even by reading. See, there are people who've read so much and they are really not useful to the society because all they are reading. Now, those are the people who are trying to get knowledge by reading. 
So everything you hear from their mouth is quote from this book, quote from this book, quote from this book, quote from that book. But then you look at their lives, they are not even good husbands or wives. They are not even good society people. They are not even, they can't even live good with their neighbors. You understand? They can't apply. See, you look at this person, I, th I thought this was a professor. Yeah, common sense, common something like this. He, he can't understand it. See, because when you're discussing it, when he's looking for the quotes, he's, he's, he's go, going to use to match it. And then he chose the quote and said, sorry, sir, we are talking about our uh, uh, street contribution. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? That's what you're talking to him about. And then he said, no, you see, in, 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 in Susu's book, I read that. <laughs> now, he didn't apply his intelligence when he was reading. He didn't become wiser. Praise God. So now he says, it doesn't avail anything. When we come to Christ Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit, it doesn't avail nothing. All these things we call qualification, all these things we call class, it doesn't matter in Christ Jesus. This is the only thing that matters. Ayakabashaya. <sighs> Faith that walks by love. And I explained that to you yesterday. What does it mean faith which walketh by love? It's talking about faith coming from God. What do you mean faith coming from God? The word of God coming from the mouth of God to you. That is the most important thing in life. Now this is the reason a man who has never been to the four walls of the classroom, never, when I mean never, never. He is in one deep village out there, cannot even communicate very well in English, but the word of God will come to him and he becomes a leader of professors. Yes. And then they begin to wonder, who taught him all these things? Huh? You're wondering? <laughs> Praise God. You remember Jesus was 12 years old when they, they had gone to the temple. They had gone to his hometown and then the temple to, to do their religious duty as parents and, and, and as family. And then Jesus sort of disappeared from when they were going back home. They realized that they've gone two days journey. They didn't see Jesus. Like, where is Jesus? Ah, uh, They had to go look for him. And after searching, they found him in the temple. What was he doing in the temple? The Bible says he was arguing, interacting with the, uh, the, the professors of the law. And, you know, they watched him and they would ask him questions he will answer. And he would ask them questions they cannot answer. Like, who's this guy? Who's this boy? And they were asking questions of the law, questions of the scriptures. He would ask them they cannot answer. Why? Because he was coming from the place of that faith I'm talking about. They were coming from the place of this material that they had. That's all they know. So one who's heard the voice of God is more valuable than one who have read the whole Bible and have crammed it in his head. I'm telling you the truth. He will do much more than the one who has all the Bible quotations in his head. This is the most important thing in life. Faith that comes from Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter your level of education, your level in life. If you miss this out, you will wake up one day and realize that the world has gone ahead of you. I'm telling you the truth. And my time is up. Praise God. I, I pray that the Spirit of God today will give you understanding. Yes. That your heart will be open to know the truth. And so much so that you will begin to live and enjoy life according to his truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.